Welcome to The Business of You. I am here today with Alex Lilly, and today we are discussing how to create transformational change through spiritual fitness practices. Um, Alex Lilly has a story of her own that she's going to be sharing with us, um, just of some of the foundational teachings uh, in her journey that has profoundly shifted her from the inside out. So welcome, Alex Lilly. I'm excited to have you here today. Thank you for having me. I'm ex very excited to be here and I'm very excited to uh, be a part of this uh, conversation and to share a little bit of my experience and my journey with you. Yeah, so I'm excited to have you here. It's super important that meaningful conversations take place. So uh, for all of you listening, um, thank you for joining in the conversation. And yes, keep, it, keep your ears about you as we are going to kind of kick this off and figure out a little bit about you and your story, Alex, and how you can share with us um, some important things that you've learned in your transformational journey so far. So tell us a little bit about your journey on healing through spiritual fitness, because I know that you have gone into a, a deep spiritual practice in your journey. And so that's kind of why we're here. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to share, I'll get to the sort of start of my at least realization that I was on a spiritual journey, um, really starting to dive deep within myself. I would say about five years ago, I had a few life events that came up that really allowed me to uh, move into a space where I'm becoming present in the moment. Um, I had a partner whose father had passed away, so that had sort of kick-started this. I need to start focusing on living my life. I need to start focusing on healing. I need to start focusing on letting go of a lot of the traumas that have not served me in the past. And um, I see that sort of experience as like a one that sort of stand out from the rest. But, and there's also um a few sort of other experiences like diving deep into childhood trauma and diving deep into the rooting cause of my anxiety and and really acknowledging that it even exists so as part of my spiritual journey i decided to become comfortable with myself become comfortable with my past and, and how did you do that? Did you did you start meditating? Did you start doing a lot of yoga? What were some of your practices that allowed you to go to those places with more patience and compassion than you had ever once given time and attention to? Mm -hmm. So yoga and meditation has definitely been uh, a driving practice for me. Yoga in the physical sort of body allowing uh, me to get into that sort of meditative state mm -hmm. and meditation has helped me um, sort of calm down in the moment when I've had anxiety attacks for example I'll move into a space where I sit down and meditate and I just be with myself whether that's sitting quietly in a room whether that's um, reading like a poetry book whether that's um, drawing sort of like any sort of exercise that really feels um, that I feel called to, to sort of get into a space where I can start to relax and I can start to sort of peel back all the sort of emotional layers that are coming up. Right. Um, Cause I realized my anxiety and emotions start to rule those sort of energies. Yeah. And, and um, bringing practices like yoga and meditation have allowed me to um, be calm and to relax and so when I come out of that headspace then I have a clear sort of conscious so I can start to make conscious decisions instead of allow subconscious um, moves and energies to rule <clears throat> that which I am and so, so I <laughs> so how did you so when you when you were talking about some of the the journey that you that you were on, you kind of had this moment where you realized um, life is very finite, 
And so how did that propel you onto encouraging your spiritual fitness practice and leaning into it more? And what did you, what did you notice in choosing that for yourself? Like, did you find more peace? Are you, um, how did you make that transformational jump from where you were to transforming through healing through the spiritual practice? So with that, uh, sort of experience five years ago of experiencing sort of death and I decided to walk away from everything that I knew. I walked away from my house. I walked away from my job. I walked away from the place that I grew up. I decided to live every day. And I actually created a bucket list. And I, <laughs> I went off that bucket list and I said, all right, these are all the things that I, I want to achieve. And there's nothing now holding me back. There's so no did you feel at that back. time that you were you had chosen or created something that wasn't really what you wanted is that what you realized in your practice is you woke up and kind of figured out oh i'm i've created something or i've created a world around me that actually doesn't serve the authentic self like i'm discovering my authentic self and now i feel like i need to shift my external environment yes exactly and i realized that because i put myself in a situation that wasn't who I was and didn't um, sort of exercise my energy in the way that I, I wanted. I became pretty depressed. I realized that I, I became really anxious in situations. Um, I realized that certain situations and workplace situations weren't um, so fitting. And when I started um, that sort of spiritual journey and I left everything, I didn't know what it would be like. I actually had no idea what I was doing, but I knew that I had to do something different. And, and what, what brought on like the level of courage? Like, where did you find the courage to literally leave everything in your life and transform it into something different? Like, what was, was there a feeling that you had where it was like more of a knowing or was there a specific understanding that you found within yourself that you knew that change was eminent? Like you had to do it. Because I think for a lot of people, I think for all of us in some way, shape or form, there's something in our lives that maybe isn't quite going the way that we want it to go or, or we're, we're looking and we're searching um, for a deeper side of ourselves uh, to be able to understand what this, this tension is that we're really looking to feel, but we don't know how to create it, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like, you know, how do we get there? How do we go from, you know, building a life that, or, or surrounding ourselves with things that we may actually not want to realizing, oh my God, I don't want this. And now how do I empower myself to choose differently and have the courage to choose from a place of love rather than fear? Mm -hmm. How did you do that? So I, I found the courage by actually checking in with myself. And I realized in the past that I refused to do so. And I allowed a lot of like unconscious moves and energy to sort of rule that. And when I decided to then take matters into my own hands consciously and start this journey with myself, then that brought the courage of me knowing that I was on the right path, um, going through the sort of like ebbs and flows of holy shit, am I making the right decision? Or, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. Um, and that the moment of checking in with myself and actually listening to myself and listening to my intuition was what gave me the bundle of courage that allowed me to continue on. Very cool. Year after year, after year going deeper into a spiritual journey, going deeper into meditation, into... Uh, Buddhism, into Vedanta, into yoga, into really just, I was like full blown having like almost like conversations with myself because I, I felt like finally I am paying attention to who it is that I am. Very and cool. That process is what ultimately gave me the courage to just keep it gives you empowerment myself. right because you can finally um, hear your own voice versus some masked version of yourself 
Um, very cool. I love that. And like within within your journey, then because obviously when you get to that point where you realize that what you've created around you isn't really what you want, that's a lot. That takes a lot of courage to lean into fear um, mm-hmm. of realizing that. Oh my god! And then going, okay, I have to choose something different then to move into a place where I really do want to be. So. Um, you know, share a little bit about kind of like the strength side that you've come to understand about yourself from facing your fear and, and or fears and having a conversation with yourself about them. Like, how do you, how do you get to the point where you're not avoiding, you're actually facing it? Mm -hmm. So I realized that when I was in a situation where I was uncomfortable, I allowed in the past anxiety to sort of rule that. So then comes the coping mechanism, then comes whatever I decided to do to make myself feel better in the short term. Mm -hmm. And what I had to realize is I had to change my perception of what it meant to be uncomfortable. I had to start to love being uncomfortable because when I'm uncomfortable, it allows me to move into a space of uh, what is it that I want? You're also very present. I find I find when you know I'm going oh I'm going into the unknown right now. I'm very present because mm-hmm. you know you want to be very conscious with the decision that you're making. And I think that a lot of us spend either a lot of time in the past thinking or a lot of time in the future. And when everything is happening only from the present moment, we have to arrive there and be consciously aware and show up mm-hmm. uh, to be able to empower decisions in the direction that we actually want to go mm-hmm. yeah. and, t- and take it head on and to not like there's a level of diving into the past and like doing shadow work and, and realizing a lot of your traumas but then you need to bring that energy back to the present moment yes you bring it back then that allows us to continue to move forward. If we're constantly right. living in the past, living, oh, well, this happened to me. Oh, well, I was traumatized by this. Oh, well, this makes me really anxious. That doesn't actually move you anywhere. But in- So how did you find, how did you create um, kind of a different way to see your healing uh, from trauma to transformation? So I- A journey for you. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I got into sort of journal, journaling a little bit to sort of like jot down how to, it was that I was feeling. Um, and then I sort of reflected on that. And I sort of like could see different trends, different sort of habits, different energies that I, I was sort of flowing through um, in time. And ultimately, bringing it back to the present moment and, and constantly checking in like, having that moment of gratitude for where it is that I'm at, having that um, moment of gratitude for what has happened and what is to come. Mm -hmm. And I just started to sort of accept and not let myself suffer. I heard this quote the other day that really resonated with me. And it says, things are as they are, we choose to suffer because we see things differently. And that mm-hmm. always strikes a chord, chord with me every time I say it. And I think that gave me a lot of mental courage and allowed, um, sort of complemented my spiritual uh, journey in the sense of being able to recognize where I am choosing to suffer and okay. where it is that I'm choosing to then be present. So taking all of that together <laughs> and just being back in the present moment and, and being grateful and, and being appreciative and, and radiating love. Because what I've noticed when I started to accept myself, then I started to attract those around me who also ex- sort of accept, not yeah. accept, also accepted themselves. And yes. And that's a really beautiful practice. And that's really honestly manifestation as well. The law of attraction, you you are who you are and you attract who you are. And and I think that was the most, that was a really pivotal point of my spiritual journey. 2020 has been like the biggest hurrah. Oh, great. That's amazing. I think a lot of people can probably relate to that as well. Like 
you really get to spend time with yourself and you really get to figure out like how it is that you want to spend your time yeah what happy yeah um, what are you interested in who do you want to surround yourself with yeah and i think I think it's 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 vital to start to address all those things so that you can start to live life how you want to and and to really start to continue to build your spiritual practice because there's no like end game you're not like oh I'm enlightened it's yeah <laughs> no it's this is game. this is a big journey big big journey um I'm, I'm wondering too, like, even with all the healing work you did, is there certain things that really helped you uh, move from perceiving your trauma from basically one, one viewpoint to another? Mm -hmm. Because I think, I think a lot of, a lot of people um, struggle with different, different types of traumas, whether it be past or recent or whatever. Um, and what can you share from your own experience from maybe a particular story um, specifically where you had this experience of trauma and how you how you move through it from where you were to where you are today mm -hmm. I, I think uh, the biggest uh, takeaway is um, the art of conversation and not feeling like we're alone not feeling like I have to deal with all these things by myself I'm able to reach out to your friends, your family, your community around you, and to have those conversations like we are right now. Yeah. <laughs> you can, like, share your story, and it might um, give a sense of sort of like relief of you've now expressed yourself, and maybe that's all your body needed. Right. It's always interesting to get like another perspective in a conversation. So I think um, when I think of back of like specific examples that have helped the spiritual journey, it's been able to have those meaningful conversations, very healing conversations with um, those people around you that ultimately love you and you love them. And I think that as I continue to have those conversations, I was able to process trauma and anxiety and the different things that I was sort of stuck on. Yeah. Um, I know my mom was honestly a huge, huge driving force of uh, being able to have like those conversations about things that happened in my childhood and things that have happened like back in the school days. And, and also my ex-partner really dove deep with me into a spiritual journey where we really just like held each other's hands and leaped off the deep end into the unknown and, and really explored like the deepest, darkest parts of ourselves and really opened up and blossomed into this like conscious reality of who it is that we really are and and accepting the, it the beauty of being yeah and yeah <laughs> wonderful yeah, i love yeah. that i those i am thankful for i'm thankful for those people in my life and everyone else around me that's been able to have those conversations to to um really complement my whole spiritual journey and yeah I love that so what would you say um were maybe the top two like if we were talking like daily fitness practices that you found yourself I think you already touched on them but if you had to choose two to share with everyone who is kind of dealing with um maybe they're at the point right now where they are feeling really alone um, and if anyone, if, if anyone listening to this really, if you, if you are at that place, um, of feeling alone and like, you can't talk to someone or reach out, I think that this is like a moment that I want to share with you that it is possible. You can have beautiful conversations with people that will listen and that are, are here to help. And our community has professionals and, or beautiful people, mm -hmm. um, that have had, wild and crazy experiences too and i think if you're listening right now and you need to hear it we're all here for you so mm -hmm. um, just know that you're not alone but that being said when it comes to alex i would love for you to share um, maybe two defining key fitness practices in your spiritual fitness that you are basically non-negotiables that you do every day to help you 
um, come home to the present moment and guide yourself from a place of love rather than fear? Like what are, what are two activities or two things that you do that really ground you um, and help you move forward? Yeah. In any challenge. So I would say, like I, I touched on like yoga and meditation, that's sort of like an ongoing practice. But um, one thing that I actually learned from you, <laughs> we honestly um, do every single day now is wake up and it is self care. I get up, I shower, I put some makeup on and I wear anything that I want because if that makes me feel good, then that's how I'm going to feel in the day. And I've done that every single day since I've met you. And I can't tell you the difference that I feel within myself. So oh, I'm great. Happy. I'm so <laughs> glad to hear that. That's awesome. I didn't know that before. So that's great. <laughs> honestly, incredibly grateful. Like, and, and so that that's something that I've taken every day. And honestly, and, and I've shared that same experience with a lot of people. And I, I've touched so many other beautiful souls. And they started oh. to see the power of that as well. Um, that's, so cool. that's, that's one of my really beautiful um, practices. And then another one that I, I do every day too is I like to sort of like journal and check in. I have these two apps that I sort of like go back and forth between as well as like jot down some notes about how I'm feeling. Cool. Um, what are they? So the two apps that I love are called CoStar. So CoStar is a, sort of an astrology based app. Um, oh, okay. to add some add your friends to it so you can see sort of like compatibility or where sort of okay. if okay. some people are sort of experiencing the same thing and then there's another beautiful app called the pattern and that's just sort of like a daily check-in reflection um sort of like slideshow carousel of journaling and you can always like send, you can add some like notes in so like randomly you'll get like a note from yourself and it'll be like, oh, yes. Oh, that's <laughs> a great reminder. Yeah. Oh, I have to check that out. Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, I so, like and I guess I'll add, add a third one right in there, but it's checking in with friends. It's like reaching out to those people like, oh, I hope they're doing well. We'll check in with them. Yeah. And, and I've noticed that as I started to check in with more and more friends or yeah. the people that I love, um, that has allowed me to be present and to, um, be in the moment and to really get that connection that we all ultimately crave because that ultimately helps us on our spiritual journey we're not alone yeah, we're we not are surrounded in a community we are all one as lots of <laughs> yes sort of text and styles and whatnot um like to call conversation it. can always be had and i think i think i'll just touch on that too um just for our listeners is what I've even personally learned like within my own transformational journey as well is sometimes when we have, when we have things that we want to talk about and have meaningful connection and conversations, sometimes speaking to whether it be trauma or our pain or our suffering that we're, we're, we're working through, sometimes the conversation happens with strangers sometimes those conversations happen with um the people that aren't a part of our our personal you know bloodline of family i've personally found that i've just i've experienced um just kinship in in strangers and had the most beautiful conversations uh and so never never negate that a, a conversation um, isn't possible for you or that having a meaningful conversation isn't available just because you might not be able to have it with your immediate family. Mm -hmm. Understanding that within your community, there are other people that are maybe have been through what you've, what you're going through and um, can actually offer a place to hold space for you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was definitely a key piece that I learned is you have to be able to tune into who is actually available within themselves to hold space and have the, have conversations um, 
that are are at that level rather than thinking or feeling that you know why can't i have it with this particular person because yeah. you may want it but it may not be the fact that that person's actually a able to listen b available to hold space and c have the capacity to do it mm -hmm. so ensure um that you you allow yourself to be open and flexible to who you share and how you ch how you create meaningful conversations around um, transformation and, and definitely with healing within trauma. Um, you know, obviously, like professionals are amazing and they can they can support and guide basically like no others. But at the end of the day, as well, I think that we we can see an enormous amount of. Um, rich conversation and and profound uh depth within strangers and people that we may not know uh, as family so keep that in mind <laughs> because that is a part of meaningful conversations and just recognizing that um there's a lot of different people around you and those conversations can be had they're available and you're never alone so Thank you so much for coming on, Alex, and sharing a lot about your your transformational change and just how uh, you found some daily practices that have supported you in healing and building confidence and redirecting your life. It's wonderful to see. And uh, yeah, how can we? How can people reach out to you if they want to connect with you in the community? Um, so I have my social handles, I guess. Um, so my Instagram is namaste.lily. Um, there I've, I sort of, I'm doing like a visual sort of journal of what it is that I'm not like going through, but there's sort of like reflection pieces, things that are meaningful, ways to like reach out and things like that. So if you want to connect with me, that would probably be the best um, platform as well. Um, I can also give uh, you my contact and we can post it at. Yeah, I'll post it on the link. So for um, anyone listening, I appreciate you taking the time to have a conversation with me. Honestly, these moments are what um, really build us and are really meaningful and impactful. Yes. So they are. thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for sharing. And uh, yeah, you guys stay tuned. There's more meaningful conversations coming the way to the business of you. So check in and yeah. Thank you, Alex Lilly for joining. Thank you. Have a lovely day. You too. See you guys. Bye.